Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Three, two, one, and we're back. And it is August the 31st. We are on day 50, uh, 55. 55 of our Harris U.S. tour. We've been to 20 two. different states. Mm-hmm. Have we been to 22? 22, I counted yesterday in the car. Have we really? Yeah. So as we drive down to Atlanta this weekend, that will be... I counted it. Yeah. That's including. Yeah. Okay. So including 22. Including Georgia, yes. Yeah. Incredible. So it's been, in, uh, well, I shouldn't be talking in past tense at this point, but I have to say this has been a remarkable, extraordinary adventure around the country that Julie and I will be talking about and thinking about and sharing stories with all of you for years to come on this podcast. Uh, but in the meanwhile, we are going to get back to what we've been talking about with regards to how to be a uh, introvert, how to be, how do I say this, how to be a very, very successful salesperson who's also an introvert in a world that seems to be dominated by extroverts. I think that's the best way to say it. Yes. My short version is how to be a real, let's see, the introvert's guide to being a real estate rock star. And, you know, there's different degrees of introverts. There's people who are, you know, more of the hermit, basement dweller, cave dweller, you know, really, really don't go out much. Why are you looking at me when you say that? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) And then there's people who are not really on that end of the spectrum, but they just maybe are a little bit, um, what I call as a coach, conversationally uncomfortable. That's right. And But there's degrees in between, right? Yep, absolutely. Oh, by the way, we are in Murphy, North Carolina at our cabin here in Murphy. And I have to say, Murphy, North Carolina is unbelievably beautiful. This whole section of the country, uh, those of you who are from the section of the country, you know what we're talking about in the Smoky Mountains. Uh, now that Julie and I have thoroughly explored basically everywhere, everywhere right? except the Northeast, we'll do that on a different trip. Right. But now that we've ex- thoroughly explored, I think what would arguably be equally, uh, you know, a lot of people would consider Big Sur in Central California mm-hmm. um, equally as beautiful as this. I have to say it is that this is at least as equally as beautiful as that part of the country, if not more. Mm-hmm. The biggest difference being obviously out there you have an ocean. Right? Yes. And here that. you have mountains and you have trees and you have, you know, the occasional you know black bear that supposedly roams through your property. <laughs> yeah. We have a little competition going in our family, the, our little triumphant with Zoe, whoever sees the bear first supposedly there's a bear in the neighborhood we should have told you that <laughs> whoever sees the bear first and gets a picture and Zoe does have a non-functioning iphone though it does take pictures um gets to name it and earns a hundred dollar uh, bonus yes so we'll see game on <laughs> and we talked to our neighbor uh kevin and uh and kevin and vicky and they were telling us that there is a black bear he does occasionally come through the property uh, very, very late at night. And so Zoe has been diligently waiting for her opportunity to earn her $100 and name yes. the bear. She has all of the flashlights found and <laughs> assembled, ready to rumble. So yes, but uh, we always like to report what we see out our window on this trip. Mm. And we are currently looking at a beautiful ridge, which is uh, going to be a sledding hill, I guess, in a few months, probably. Mm-hmm. But I mean, thousands of just gorgeous greenery, trees, pine trees, maple trees. I know there's a lot of oak out there. Uh, and we're also being rained on by Hurricane Ida. You know, it does surprise me. I know this area has really taken off, especially mm-hmm. post-COVID, as far as appreciation. And, you know, I, this uh, area, there's, it's basically a hot seller's market. But it really honestly does surprise me that this part of the country, now that, you know, we've traveled and thoroughly investigated hasn't been more desirous over the generations because mm-hmm. it really is incredible. And, and yes. if you think from a proximity, uh, and now I realize that, you know, anything that most people would consider civilization is a good solid two hours away. Yeah, this for is sure. pretty remote, really. Yeah. And, but really, even with that said, there's so much density of humans in this part of the country that for mm-hmm. this not to have been, um, you know, at this point, I don't know what the word would be, but for it to still be so beautiful and so natural is a real Undeveloped. Gift. Undeveloped, yeah. yeah. And so people, if, folks, if you guys are looking for a real, I think, different experience, definitely consider the Smoky Mountains as far as a place to travel. And you will probably fall in love with it just like Julie and I did. Uh, I would not be surprised at all if you did because uh, between the people and the, the scene, the, just the scenery and the sense of like, every, we don't have internet at our cabin yet. So Julie was feeling a little bit anxious because she does certain things in the morning with the business and the coaching business. And, you know, she has her routine of five or six things that she does every morning. 
you know, we've got a relatively large coaching business. We have, you know, over 30 people that work for us. And you want to check in to make sure, you know, Julie's mission control, basically. And with no internet, she was getting a little anxious. And I could sense yeah. it. And she was getting a little testy. You know what our people are doing. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, it's your habit, basically. Yeah. And you are analytical. Indeed. And, and are, one of our staff also has COVID. I want to check yep. on him. Tom, so. has, Tom has COVID. And you are, you know, you are an introvert. And you have, you like your schedule. I like my routine. routine. But what did we do? We went on a walk around the property. It's 130 acres. And uh, we didn't walk all 130 acres. We went on a, a walk around the property, and you came back, and you're sanguine as sanguine we can be. It's all good. That's the gift of nature. It is. You That's know, true. It, it's a good uh, way to reset your mind. And even walking in the rain, I mean, it's really lovely, and it's so green. And visited the ponds and saw a lot of cool wildlife, birds, and stuff like that. So, so I'm Zo- sure we'll see more once it stops raining. So Zoe, who's a, a, an extrovert <laughs> and, a, and a constant <laughs> was, chatterbox, yeah. On our walk this morning, did you notice because it was so quiet and serene out, and the only thing you heard was birds? You and Zoe. She, and, well, no, she stopped talking. <laughs> she did. Yeah. After she was, a while. We went, I was like, I looked over at you, and I was like, this kid is not talking our ears off. What is going on is here? she okay? It, well, it's because she, without knowing it, was basically, you know, bonding with the environment, which was exactly what I was hoping would yes. happen. Mm-hmm. So she has the diversity of experiences. It's, you know, it was a good she idea, grows yeah. up in the Ritz-Carlton, Puerto Rico right now, and for her to come here now and uh, you know experience this type of life with these types of amazing people, I think will really create an interesting human. Hopefully, yes. Too soon to tell, <laughs> that's but I right. think so. Well, so listen, that's yeah. what we are doing on this podcast this week is we're talking to you guys about how to win, even if you are an introvert in an, a world that's really, especially in an industry that's seemingly dominated by extroverts. I mean, if you want to learn more about our coaching program, remember, guys, the easiest thing for you to do is just text the word success to 47372 text the word success to 47372 or you can just go over to timandjulieharris.com and uh, click on coaching and click on um, premier and then you will be off to the races and you can learn more about our coaching program premier coaching is the perfect program for all of you guys to get started in it's absolutely the best way for you to learn more about what we're offering and uh, harris premier coaching really is a complete A to Z system. It's a perfect complement for our best-selling book. Oh, and uh, I should say this too. Thank you for those of you who have been sending us pictures of our book in Barnes & Noble. We have been finding it in Barnes & Nobles as we stopped in various ones across the country. And even to this day, even though the book's been out for a couple years, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is such a thrill to see this book that Julie and I took so long to write sitting <laughs> on the bookshelves and, and most of the bookshelves will have one or two in stock because they're selling out. So if you've not picked up uh, Barnes or um, not picked up Harris rules are it's almost 500 five star reviews on uh, Amazon. Well, frankly, Amazon's the easiest place to get it and they'll deliver it to you obviously the second day. Mm-hmm. So we are going to be uh, picking up where we left off yesterday and we are on point number five, five. Yes. So this is all about having a plan and studying how to kind of get out of your own way if you're on that uh, conversationally uncomfortable spectrum. So point number five, in new situations, actually have a plan. If it's a tough competitive listing appointment and you haven't been on many of those, use your pre-qualification script, your pre-listing package, arrive early, be practiced with what you're doing on your presentation. You know, previewing property will give you a lot of uh, confidence in your pricing It'll give you an edge. You want to have a plan. You don't want to just fall back on what some of you have been told. Well, you know, it's okay. Just expect to take it 50% of the time. That's not okay. What is okay is to follow, you know, we did a whole podcast about this last week, the seven step listing process. Mm -hmm. So knowledge equals confidence and ignorance equals fear. And if you're already nervous, adding ignorance to that fear will basically lose you the appointment. Exactly, because one thing that analytical people or introverted people hate the most is winging it. And for the most part, they're terrible at it. So um, on this podcast, Julie Julie and I are both introverts by nature, but Julie's definitely more analytical than me. And she's the one that's in charge of making sure we always have content. Now, occasionally, I will not necessarily You'll stick preempt to, my content. <laughs> preempt your content. <laughs> if there was something happening that, you know, maybe I'd seen a from all of our, we, we have thousands of coaching clients all over the country and we're picking up thousands of coaching clients all over the world. And uh, when I start to see a, a confluence of concern around a specific topic or topics, mm-hmm. we're going to preempt whatever we'd prepared for you guys so we can drill down on that. And that might be, you know, market, uh, it, uh, iterate or market um, gyrations. It might be you know, something that happened in the news. It might be things like that. We do avoid politics like the plague and what isn't political nowadays, it seems. But for the most part, uh, Julie will have, as this is, I'm looking at it now and we're, Mm -hmm. she's about, she's getting a little mad at me because I'm not sticking to her script and we're moving on to point number six. But the point is, is that is ultimately how you win. If you're an introvert, especially if you're analytical, you have to be prepared, over-prepared, right? 
you know, follow one course yeah. until uh, successful focus. And that's what a coaching program is all about. It's leaving nothing to chance. It's a tried and true tested system that's going to get you to from point A to point Z uh, the quickest with the least amount of pain and hus uh, hassle and the least amount of having to worry about losing because you're going to know what to say and how to say it. That's the whole point of joining a coaching program. And look, I know the coaching programs aren't for all of you. There's no doubt. Some of you are not that serious about your careers yet, but you will be. So it's just not your time yet. But for the vast majority of you that don't want to waste time, please do consider becoming a coaching client and do text the word success to 47372. Yes, so here's a secret for some of my introverted friends. The naturally extroverted people tend to be a bit less careful on appointments because they're relying on their personality and they've won a lot of times, you know, by default. But you can launch your sneak attack by being better, faster, smarter, more polished, and more poised. So for example, some of the, somebody that might be more gregarious than you but really wasn't that careful on the CMA, and then you come in and you present some very specific facts and are simply more professional. Maybe you used your pre-qualification questions, but they didn't. Maybe you remembered to close. You know, you have to actually ask for the business and they just assumed that they had it when they walked out the door. It's so they might have been more, um, you know, more outgoing than you, but you were actually more professional. So you made this point and you're living proof of it, frankly. Uh, it is easier for an introverted analytical person to train themselves, um, dare I say, act as if mm -hmm. they're gregarious and more uh, demonstrative and more outgoing than it is for an extroverted, naturally extroverted person to be uh, more detail-oriented and analytical. Absolutely. So it's easier for somebody like Julie, and like many of you, frankly, to learn to be more of a, a performer, learn to be essentially what the sellers will, might expect as far as your extrovertedness, you can bring it out on you. It's just acting. Julie used the examples yesterday. And you know, it's obvious if you guys think about this, some of the best actors in planet earth are big time introverted people and they've learned mm -hmm. to be more extroverted. Julie used the example of Johnny Depp. Well, I mean, one of Julie's favorite actors is um, James Bond. Daniel Craig. Who she met, who also was a big dork, introverted dork. And totally. Now, I say this <laughs> being somewhat of an yeah. introverted dork myself. Yeah. And he was definitely introverted. And so what happens in those cases is they know they are studied. They're not only going to study their scripts and know what to say, but they're going to get down into the minutia and they're going to start paying attention to the little nuanced differences. And if they don't win, they're not going to just brush it off. They're going to go back and the smart ones are going to go back and they're going to figure out why, dare I say, analyze why they didn't win. Mm -hmm. And they're going to go back and change their approach. Whereas a person that's more extroverted, who's just used to being the life of the party, used to having people just gravitate towards them, they're not going to take that opportunity when they don't win to step back and figure out why they didn't win. They're just going to write it off and they're going to let their egos uh, dominate their uh, their thought process. Oh, they must have told the other agent must have told them a higher price or a yep. lower commission, or, or they'll the just say, "Well, we just didn't hit it off." Right, exactly. And if there is a little slight echo, guys, it's because we are in our uh, new master bedroom here in Murphy, and there is no sound deadening, so just bear with us. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, not the normal studio. Mm -mm. All right, so point number six: give yourself mini breaks. This is not during a listing presentation. This is during social events, social situations, so that you can recharge. Take a break. Walk around outside. Take a restroom break if you're at a restaurant. Avoid too much alcohol and too much caffeine because either one of those can knock you off of your well-planned game. But allow yourself that break. Go refill the cup. You used parties as an example. And this is something that I think I see a lot of analytical people struggling with. Mm -hmm. They get, um, so if it's a, if it's a group of people, uh, it, obviously it's a party and you have a tendency, people will have a tendency who are introverted analytical to gravitate towards other people and not detach from them. In other words, they're not going out there networking and talking yeah. with other people. They'll talk with the one person they knew at the party. Exactly. Or and who that's, invited them. And they'll be in the corner and they'll be mm -hmm. wallflyers the whole time and they won't go out there networking get to know more people and practice their Jedi mind trick, you know, like Ford, the basic, mm -hmm. you know, family yeah. occupation, recreation dreams. So Julie keeping us practical, which is our, you know, theme of our mm -hmm. coaching business. Yeah. What, when you are in those, cause you used to mm -hmm. have that issue, right? Sure. Whereas I feel like the exact opposite. If I talk mm -hmm. with someone for too long, like I just want to, I'm wanting to meet more people naturally. And right. you are the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. And when you and I go to professional uh, social events or social events period, we generally speaking, we don't hang out with each other. We'll right. go in different, so we can That's meet true. more people. We just do that naturally. Mm -hmm. But we train to do that. Yes. How do you avoid getting stuck talking to a small group of people That's a and great not question. networking? Yeah, it's a great question. And it is a tendency to do that because you're a little bit more in your comfort zone when you're talking to people you already know. 
So first thing I'll say is it does get easier, but only when you practice this, you can't just, you know, try an event out every six months and expect to get better. So what I used to do and what I do even now when we're out, you know, amongst friends or whoever is I, of course, I'll acknowledge that person, you know, talk to them, ask them a few forward questions, you know, kind of check in, take their temperature, make sure that we chatted. And then I'll look for somebody else to introduce them to if I know somebody else and get them talking. And then that releases me from the conversation. Now, if I don't happen to know somebody, then I'm going to ask them, how did you come to this event? How do you know so-and-so who invited both of us? Then they'll talk about somebody and they'll almost always then introduce me to somebody new that I'll start talking to. And then the chain goes on. And you can do that if you bring another person into the conversation. And if you do have those people that are anchors in a room and they're going to make it very difficult for you to walk away without feeling rude, Julie's technique right there works perfectly. Just invite other people over and introduce them. And sometimes it might take a couple people to introduce them. Or, oh, hey, Julie, I want you to introduce, I want to introduce you to Bob. Bob and you have something in common I think mm-hmm. you'll find really surprising. That's right. And then take it over. Hey, Julie, meet Bob. You and uh, Bob both have a kid named Zoe, right, or whatever. Yes. And then mm-hmm. basically you can and let the conversation start and then get out of, get out of Dodge. Yeah. But, you know, there's something to almost, you know, I think that people who are naturally more social don't think about this stuff as much. I I find it helpful to almost make it a game, you know, like you've got to embrace why you are at that function. You're not there to just go do your time. That you might as well not show up if you're going to do that. Mm-hmm. You are there to expand your center of influence. You are there so that you will be the person that somebody knows when they have that decision to make. Remember all those studies they always say when you you're going to hire somebody to do, you know, to list your house, the first thing you ask yourself is, who do, who do I already know? Your job is to become the person they already know. That gives you a tremendous advantage. All of you guys know that because when you're competing against somebody that's tight in their center of influence, it's a lot harder to compete with. So be that person. And go back a couple podcasts, guys, and re-listen. Re-listen this whole series on being an introvert because the other thing is that we talk about is that, again, never talk about yourself. You have to, but when you have to socially, it's awkward if you don't in some cases. But avoid talking about yourself. And the best way to make someone not just like you but love you is make eye contact with them. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, there's all these extra social boundaries and rules that have come into place, you know, because of COVID, right? You know, most people are wanting to, depending on where you are, frankly, in the country, it's a fist bump or it's a nothing. Sometimes people just don't even, you know, and that's going to be, unfortunately, something that's going to be trained into different people that are going to, it's going to last generations. Yeah, Uh, but you should know what your market kind of is accepting of at the time. Yeah. So you don't freak people out or unfreak people out. Well, I mean, as we've traveled, it'll change as we've traveled to different parts of the country. The more yeah. rural areas like we are now, it's like COVID never existed. Yeah. And they, matter of fact, had virtually no COVID here in Murphy. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and and you travel outside of... Uh, but then you go to San Francisco and you better mask up. And not just not mask up. Hugging each other. Full hazmat suit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. With, I mean, that's how people are just off the... But the yeah. point is, is that the key is when you're talking to people, make sure that you don't talk about yourself. And that's a bad habit that a lot of people have. Frankly, that's a bad habit that most extroverted people have. Don't talk about yourself. Ask questions about them and ask follow-up questions showing that you listened to what they said. And one of the things that you can do to really make them uh, love you is when they you ask them questions. Remember, it's family, occupation, recreation, dreams, Ford. When you're asking them questions about their family, don't just ask them question after question after question after question like they're taking a survey. Ask them a question, then ask them another question based on what they just said. You can relate to them a little bit, but do not spin and make the conversation about yourself. As soon as you do, you're going to lose that relationship because people are naturally, next time they see you, or frankly, even if they think of you, they're going to naturally remember the experience they had of someone showing sincere interest in them. Guys, there is nothing more powerful when you're wanting to be that, have that it factor, that certain je ne sais quoi, the, oh, you know, Bob walked into the room and everyone just, you know, gravitate towards Bob. You heard, you've heard this sort of mythical quality that some people have. And here's what the mythical quality is. They sometimes when they're standing, when they walk up to you, they'll put an, a, a hand, though you've got to be careful on this too, right? But you, they put a hand on your, your arm like this. Mm-hmm. And then they'll, sometimes they'll put two hands on like, so there's the double handshake, right? Mm -hmm. They'll shake hands and they'll put their other hand, like if you're right-handed, you shake their left hand, then you put your left hand on their shoulder Mm -hmm. and then you take a little step back. And then when you're talking to them, you look at them. You, you don't let your eyes wander. You're not checking your phone. You're not looking around. You're not seeing who else is in the room. You're not doing all that stuff. Exactly. And, and, and so here's the extra thing. I want you to think about this. 
when youths are in uh, any kind of social environment, it has become accepted to be rude. And what do I mean by that? People, it used to be when you are conversing, like sort of getting along with humans 101, is to not allow your mind to wander or not look at somebody. Or Look, I, when I'm talking to somebody and I'm concentrating, I always look off to the side. And a lot of you do the same thing. It's a natural characteristic of communication. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm, what I'm suggesting here, here is, as especially you guys who are the younger generations, who've normalized having your phone as an appendage. It's almost like an extra arm, right? And it's this crying, screaming baby that needs constant <laughs> care and feeding and attention. Well, the suggestion to you is, especially if you're younger, if you really want to have something special, that an, an undefinable quality, don't be like your you know, millennial brethren uh, and, or your Generation Z sisterin, right? And don't allow yourself to be distracted by these things and have direct focus with somebody and practice good old-fashioned human-to-human communication. You will have such an undefinable quality that people will not understand why it is that so many people are attracted to you. And the only reason is, is because you, now you might not be somebody who gives much of a hooey about other humans and you're not, not in all this, not your thing. And all this uh, that we're describing to you seems like it's a bridge too far. Well, here's an interesting little psychological fact. The more you practice it, the more natural it becomes. The more natural it becomes, the more like you it becomes. Because some of you are so uh, dug in to being introverted dorks who have like three people in their lives and everything else basically is gathered from, you know, digital means. That's not how you're ever going to flourish in life, not just professionally as a salesperson, but in life in general. The more relationships you have, look, we're not saying have a bunch of fake relationships, but the more relationships you have, the more people you can communicate with, it 100% of the time, the happier person you're going to be, the richer, fuller life you're going to have, the more opportunities you're going to create and manifest for yourself. Hopefully all that makes sense. Yes, that actually was point number seven, cultivate the habit of listening well. Many introverts are too focused on what to say next and miss the finer details of what the other person's saying. The cure for this is to repeat what you just heard without overly doing that. We've all had conversations where that gets awkward, right? But you can adopt phrases like, what I hear you saying is, or I think what you're saying is, I understand, tell me more about that. Create conversation, but actually listen. Yours, your favorite is tell me more about that. That's one you use. Yeah. And that, and that really does work. So if someone's, again, let's just make this practical. You're talking to someone about their family. Um, and they mentioned that they're from here in, you know, Murphy, North Carolina, and they, you know, this, the other thing, and they have people that live here and people live there. And then you could say, well, tell me more about that. When you say you guys have lived here for generations, are you talking about all the way back to when Irish and Scottish people were migrating here or like how far, how long is your gener have your fan that kind of thing. And then they'll give you more information. You can keep on drilling down. Um, and even if you feel like you're not being genuine, it, it, you will not feel like you're being genuine because you're probably too introverted and probably uh, too analytical. But the more you practice it, the more it's going to – don't say to yourself, in other words, oh, I can't do that. I feel like I'm faking it. You have to fake it or act like a really great actor does until it becomes natural. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean if you went to the gym today and you decide you're going to start figuring out how to run, you know – 10 minute miles and six minute miles. You're going to just figure out how to, you're going to be faking it for a long damn time mm -hmm. until you get your psychology and your, and your physiology in alignment with your, you know, with the goal of accomplishing that, you know, really great mile for yourself. And that's going to be the same way when you're communicating with people. So expect it depending on, you know, using my gym analogy, depending on how out of shape you are, expect it to be hard. Expect it not to feel natural. Expect every ounce of your body, every cell in your body to want to fight against the, uh, your desire to essentially get in shape and run that really fast mile, you know, expect it to not be easy and don't like, uh, don't uh, succumb to your ego saying, Oh, this is too hard because that's just nothing but being lazy at that's the end of giving the day. up too soon. So point number eight, force yourself. This is one they have a lot of trouble with. Sometimes force yourself to not just be good, but be great on the phone. Yes, that's right. It's unavoidable in real estate. If you're, more if you're more comfortable in person, set an immediate appointment to, set in, to meet in person. Even if it's for coffee, maybe it's a Zoom call, but you've got to better understand the prospect of the client situation. You can't hide out. And it should be a goal, not just of introverts, but really everyone in real estate to embrace the phone, be on the phone. When in doubt, pick up the phone. Don't have all these elaborate rules that just because they texted you, you can only text them back. Does well, that make sense? So there it is. That's another little, uh, I hope you guys are thinking about what Julie uh, just said. So it goes back to communication. When everybody else is hiding behind ones and zeros, right? Everyone's doing things digitally, texting. And I love digital. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I love texting. 
Um, but whenever, when the whole world is hiding behind anything digital, the point, the way you excel and you rise to the top is you call people. You go and have communications with people. Don't let the current, you know, internet guru marketing people convince you that uh, direct one-on-one -on -one communication won't be always the dominant uh, form of communication amongst humans. It always will be. And anyone who tells you different is only telling you that because they're trying to probably sell you something. But more importantly, they probably just haven't ever learned how to do it themselves. So definitely have direct communications. And here's an example. I'm a seller. I've now called three different agents. I maybe have seen signs. I've got a referral. I Whatever. I put all these calls out or whatever. Email. doesn't matter. I've communicated with three different agents. The first two agents, you know, they get back with me in their own due time. You know, here it is mountain time, so it might be the next day. Or, you know, what uh, Kevin told me yesterday, you know, we call it island time in Puerto mm -hmm. Rico. They call it mountain time I here. I believe it. Yeah. yeah. So basically what he's saying is nothing happens fast here. Yeah. Well, in any event, so let's say the first two agents sort of lackadaisically uh, circle back around, get, get a hold of you, but they do it digitally. They return an email. Maybe they text the seller, but you got that lead and you called them back urgently. Like within five minutes of getting the lead, you called them back. Don't you think immediately that's going to have an effect on that seller with regards to who they're going to want to hire to be their listing agent? Don't you think that in itself, especially if you backfill it with our pre-listing pack and then you follow our listing presentation, that will win you the listing even if you're a brand new agent. And so that's the kind of thing that you guys have to be keeping in mind when it comes to winning, when it comes to actually winning consistently, when it comes to having ever increasing levels of success, the secret sauce is to keep things so that you are going to be furiously fast. You're going to be urgent. But when you communicate with people, you're knowing what to say and how to say it. You're not winging it. You're not faking it. You're not pretending. You're not relying on your ability to read the tea leaves or your, the strength of your personality. So this is a, and we have several more points we're looking forward to sharing with you guys the rest of the week. And I look out the window and we were going to give you guys another point, but we are here in Murphy, North Carolina. We do not have internet connection. We have to go to our next door neighbor's house and use their internet connection. And a uh, hurricane Irma, uh, Ida, Ida is starting to show up here and the clouds are getting dark. And I'm afraid if we don't save we the show, wrap it up, and, uh, wrap it up and send it off. We will not have a live podcast today. And that would be sad. Yes, it would. So God bless all of you guys. Have a fantastic day. And we'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.